Welcome to Politics Done Right at the Bridge Alliance Conference. With us right now, we have David Nevins, one of the co-founders of the Bridge Alliance. Yes, sir. An important thing that you've done, my friend. An important thing. Thank you. America should thank you for this. I tell you what, give me the genesis of uh, the Bridge Alliance, first of all. The genesis is that um, there's a whole field out there of organizations working in all different areas of democratic revitalization. Right. And Americans don't know about it. And this is a real thing. It's happening. Right. The Bridge Alliance has 100 organizations, some with budgets of 500000 a year, some with a million, two, three million dollars doing incredible work in civic engagement, public policy, campaign financing reform, in all these different areas to fulfill the dream of our founding fathers, but Americans don't know about it. And they're working independently. So the Bridge Alliance was formed to to elevate and to expand the power of what they're doing individually. It's actually based on a very simple study, a simple concept from a Stanford study in 2011, which is no matter how well funded and how well managed any one of these organizations are, you're never going to achieve major political democratic reform unless they work together. They get out of their silos and they realize the collective power of working together. So real. Now, uh, yesterday we were sitting down and we were talking, and you said uh, that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, the left or the right, the most important thing is that you kind of let yourself go and let data flow yes. so that you can actually make decisions yes. based yes. on not necessarily your ideological context, yes. but otherwise. Tell me more about that. Well, I'm a firm believer that politics as it's designed today, it's basically inductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. People have their opinion. Explain that. People don't yeah. understand that. People have their opinion first and then get the data to right. support the opinion they already have. Right. As opposed to the other way around. You know, I have biases. You have biases. But at least try to get beyond the bias and let the information, the facts, lead you to the right direction. No. Go ahead. Yes. And and realize that things aren't black and white, that there's a little truth on all sides of the equation. But we're more than just compromise. It's not just taking the middle, it's finding the best from the left, the best from the right, and most importantly, finding the best that hasn't even been created or thought of yet. Being that open-minded to realize that if we expand our mind, we can, we can expand the the effectiveness of democracy. I think good minds think alike. I've been hearing uh, some stuff from all sides and something that I've thought about all. I think if, uh, you know, there's a left, there's a right, and folks talk about a middle. All of them are different paradigms and all of them are opposition. Yeah. So I, I, I think I, I, I heard bits and pieces of what we're driving to, and that is let's forget about the left, let's forget about the right, let's forget even about the middle and start looking at issues individually and how they affect people. Your thoughts on that? Exactly. Yes, it's an open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a creativity. It's uh, listening mm -hmm. first. That's what happens all too often, is that we, we have our opinions. We have to speak. Let's slow down. Let's listen. Um, I'd love to hear a politician someday, mm -hmm. when they're asked a question, say, hmm, no one's ever asked me that. Or they ask me that all the time. I don't really know. It never happens. Everybody has an opinion first. Let's let the facts, let's let the interactions, let's let the collective humanity lead us uh, to the democracy we all believe we should have. I would be remiss if I don't, don't tell you that last year I, I attended uh, the conference and um, it was great, but it was missing something. Yes, it was. Okay? Yes, it was. And uh, I turned around to quite a few people and I said, you know, um, why does this room look like this from, yes. uh, from a group that maybe it was, a, it was probably a bit biased, to get, biased towards progress, I mean, biased with progressives, but at the same time, we had a lot of conservatives in there as well. But why did the room look this way? You guys, well, made, a, you guys made an intentional effort. Yes, we did. In, uh, and reason, uh, uh, that deserves a huge commendation because yes, these kinds of efforts have to be intentional for various reasons. Yes. Tell me what you did. Well, we were called out. It's like so many of these conferences in the space. 
you know, it was mostly white, mm -hmm. mostly well-educated, mm -hmm. mostly people who've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. And that's not what America is. You know, if we're ever going to become a national movement, if we're never going to get 12 million Americans, which is the, the amount, 3.5 percent, yes, yeah. we have to represent the diversity of America. Right. And that's what we set out. We were called out for it, and uh, we engaged some incredible people who are uh, people of color, people of different faiths, be people from rural areas, people from cities, who realize that we have to expand the movement. In this summit, uh, we were fortunate. We had incredible funding to, to allow people to come to something like this who could never afford to travel from California or the Midwest to an event like this. And this, I believe, this summit was truly reflective of the diversity of America. And if we don't fulfill the, the dream of our founding fathers in writing, mm -hmm. they never effectuated it, maybe they never wanted to totally effectuate it, but if we never reach the ideals of having a pluralistic society, a diverse society, and figure out how we're going to all work together, we're going to fail. Because okay. the reality is, right. that's what we are. Well, uh, two answers there, and, and first, firstly, um, uh, I, I think we, work that we are doing, it's making this country a much better country. The current people are making the country a better country. Uh, I, and one thing that I need to point out, what Bridge Alliance did in that room today, I don't know how much it deep inside it means to you, but I can tell you something. The difference that you see in that room to many is huge because it is, I, I go to a lot of conferences every year, yeah. progressive and otherwise, and you don't see the intentionality that I saw there. And when I walked into the room, uh, I, well, you know, I, I, I spoke to your co-founder and, um, and, and she said, oh, you're going to see a different uh, room when you see, and, and I said, oh yeah, great. And that's nice and all of that. And that's what I said. But deep inside I said, I know what I'm going to see when I get to the conference. You guys ought to be very, very much commended for how this was attained because it had, it doesn't look like any other conference that I've seen in the last several in, in the last several years. Kind of, yeah. It's not about kindness, yeah. it's about reality. Yeah. Well I was blown away by by the expression of humanity. Right. The the incredible ideas. Right. The not only ideas, but ideas that can be turned into action. Right. That's what we need. Right. I've been to so many of these events before. Right. And everybody has great ideas, but what is the next step? How are we going to make this happen? Right. You know, what is the oath that people in that room today are going to take? Right. You know, are they going to be committed, you know, leaving the room to, to making this happen? I believe we will. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, if, if uh, a lot of the people that I've spoken to of every, every, everywhere, yeah. uh, they were very impressed. And I, I think you, you know, I think this is what we want to get done. And I think that... Uh, I, I, I am not, I'm not the, the person that, that lives on hope. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, you're talking, this is a whole other story. You're, you're talking to a business guy. Yes, there I'm, we go. I'm a numbers guy, I'm a spreadsheet yeah. guy, I'm a practical guy. Yeah. Right, right. So, um, I don't live on hope either. Right. You know, if I'm trying to sell a deal, right. you're people gonna want do the reality. Deal. Yes. yes. So, um, you know, per, on the surface it sounds idealistic. Right. But if we can put the nuts and bolts to it and provide the resources that people need right. and to approach things practically. We can, we can turn these ideas into action and reality. I, I firmly believe that, especially you know, because I was really inspired today right. with the young people. Oh, that's the hope. Uh, yes, that's oh the yeah. Hope. They're, they're, that, that high 17 year old, high, oh, you, you I ought to see, believe she was you ought to see the interview that we did. Oh. Okay, so, the, yes. so what, what I'm saying is uh, it was intentional that we went across age, race, gender, religion. It was intentional. Yes. And it shows that intentionality works. It's something that we ought to preach. Is it something that I see? So I'm saying, David, <laughs> Nevin, <laughs> Bridge Thank Alliance, you, you keep up the good All work, right. and Thank I you, love friend. what's going All on right. here. Thank you. Enjoy. Take care.